It was a milk truck on train tracks in Weld County that's now being blamed for an Amtrak train derailment. It was the California Zephyr that derailed near Keensburg at about 10 last night. Colorado State Patrol says the semi didn't stop at a stop sign. That's right near I-76 and County Road 398. Amtrak says there were 69 people on board the train at the time. The engineer of the train suffered life-threatening injuries and had to be airlifted to the hospital. And three passengers later had to be treated with minor injuries. The driver of the semi, the passenger inside with him, was not hurt. The state patrol tells us charges for the crash are pending. We're learning more about the crash that closed I-25 near Castle Pines. The closure started as a four-car crash caused by speeding. The cars were on the shoulder when a semi passing through hit several of the cars. Two people involved in the first crash who were outside of their cars suffered serious injuries. Colorado State Patrol says it's unclear if they were actually hit by the semi or if they were hit by the vehicles, hit by the vehicles. I-25 reopened about two hours ago. Denver's Public Library wants to get community feedback right now as far as potential renovations to the Ross Broadway branch. That's an area that's been troubled. Nearby businesses tell us they're frustrated with illegal activity. Nine News reporter Janelle Finch joins us with what some of the businesses and the neighbors are dealing with and talking about. Merchants and neighbors in the Baker area of Denver are expressing concerns with the crowds frequenting the Bro Ross Broadway Library. One shop owner tells me she has a direct relationship with Denver police because the drug acti activity outside her business is out of hand. Vesper Holly Muck says she moved into her space on Bayot Avenue and South Broadway May 2023. She says since then, she's had to deal with challenges from her neighbors, more specifically, the ones staying around the Ross Broadway Branch Library. She knew she would have to overcome new hurdles as a new business owner, but didn't think it would be as much of a concern as it is. There's days in front of the library that you'll see 10, 15 unhoused people just camped out. Um, we find evidence of drug use over there, baggies, you know, tinfoil needles, that kind of stuff in front of the library. And it's just like, I wouldn't want to bring my child to that library. The Denver Public Library says it's aware of the community's safety concerns and the communications director says the library is working with branch staff to make sure everyone feels welcomed. Until then, Muck and her neighbors are enduring what they consider a less than ideal state of public safety. You can tell that these people are struggling and, you know, it's just, it's unfortunate that it, it ends up kind of spilling over onto us as well as business owners, as patrons, as just residents of the community, so. The Ross Broadway branch is set to undergo renovations through a city bond. According to the project dashboard, renovations are in the design phase with construction set to begin at the end of this year. The library says it plans to use the community survey information to help define the scope of updates. Yeah, it's a real catch-22 when you think about it. You know, we always think of libraries and families, but it's been extremely cold. We know we need these warming shelters and people need a place to gather. And then there's the business element. It's, it's a, a fine lot. balance that they need to figure out. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Janelle. The sentencing for a man shot by police in downtown Denver is being pushed back by a week. Jordan Waddy pleaded guilty to one felony, possession of a weapon by a previous offender. Back in July of 2022, Waddy was outside Larimer Beer Hall when he got into a fight. Police tried to stop him, and they say he pulled out a gun. Officers shot at him and into a large crowd of people. Six bystanders and Waddy were hurt. He was facing five charges. Four were dismissed under a plea deal. Sentencing is now scheduled for next Thursday. A grand jury indicted Officer Brandon Ramos for the shooting, saying he did not have a clear line of fire when he fired his gun. As part of the plea deal, Ramos agreed to 18 months of probation. The victims still have a pending lawsuit against the city. Boy, another very warm day here at the end of January. Beautiful blue skies looking live on downtown. Temperatures jumping up into the 60s. The warm days are going to continue. Kathy Sabin joins us now. Kathy, January going out like an ocelot, but it sounds like <laughs> February could come in like a wallaby. That's exactly right. That's exactly what we were just a discussing. A wallaby. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's an old weather thing. Yeah. Okay. In like a wallaby. 
Yeah, they're hopping all over the place. I've missed control. it. I just missed that one. <laughs> well, that's a big one. Okay. They're cute, but they can be mean. Yeah, feisty. <laughs> no, good yeah. to know. <laughs> feisty, that's what they are. Yes, January going out like a lamb, February coming in like a lion. It could turn out to be a pretty good storm for our mountains and foothills this weekend, and Denver may get in on the action as well. Hard to believe we're talking about snow and heavy snow when you have a day like this, and a string of days with sunshine and above average highs in the mid 60s. Not much in the way of cloud cover, hoping for a pretty sunset in Fort Collins. Mountains always looking for more snow up that way, and Mother Nature will deliver starting Friday. The numbers that you're seeing this afternoon are way above the average of 44. We'll do this again tomorrow, and the next day, wind's not much of a factor, and everybody loves it when that's the story. And when you look at our regional radar and satellite composite, we are just sitting pretty right here, but it's off to the west. You've got to focus your attention on this system right here. Still offshore, off the coast, so San Francisco, that is the system that will be heading our way. And the future cast models say there is a lot of water with this system, but what there isn't a lot of is just cold air. So we have to see where this very spring like storm is going to set up. Setting up in southeastern Colorado is favorable for deep upslope and heavy snow here, but some of this precipitation may fall in Denver initially as rain, which would certainly cut the snow totals quite a bit. Around the area tonight, very little in the way of cloud cover. Sunny day coming up tomorrow. We're still close to 60 this hour, watching the numbers drop into the 40s by about 8 o'clock tonight. In Maine weather, yes, how long can we enjoy the sunshine in 60s? We'll talk about that. The weekend storm and what it means for plants that you have outdoors, and we'll see if we can give you an idea of that metro snow forecast. That's just ahead. Speaking of the cold weather, next winter you might be paying even more for your home's energy. Excel is asking Colorado regulators to hike its natural gas base rate by nearly 10% for next winter. This first reported by our friends at the Denver Business Journal. Excel, Excel filed that rate increase request yesterday with the state. The rate increase would start in November, but it wouldn't show up on customers' bills until February of 2025. Now, if that rate hike is approved, Excel would get $117 million more million from natural gas customers annually, and it would affect about 1.5 million customers. UPS becoming the latest company to cut jobs. The company says they'll be laying off 12,000 people. They say managers and contractors will make up most of the layoffs. UPS reported a $9 billion decline last year, losing a lot of business with that possible strike by Teamsters that shifted many shipments to rival carriers. You always hear about it as a way to save money, people talking about cutting the cord. But even the most experienced cord cutter might tell you that their bills for all of the different streaming services actually add up to more than they were paying for cable. There's a lot to stream, lots of streaming to be done. What avenues. <laughs> so how do you save money and then still watch all of your favorite shows? Consumer investigator Steve Steger has some tips from our partners at Consumer Reports. So we have Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus, Hulu, Paramount Plus, ESPN Plus. Brady Duran says the bills to keep up with all of his must-see shows add up, but he doesn't want to miss out. If we can still watch what we want for less, I'm all ears. Let's get to it. Consumer Reports has five ways to slash your streaming bill. First, you can become a service hopper, and that's subscribing to a service, binging all the shows you want to watch, and then canceling before moving on to a different service. And there are apps and websites like Just Watch and Real Good that can help you keep track of all the shows and movies you want to see and then get alerts when they become available on one of the services you use. Number two, consider a cheaper tier. Not long ago, streaming services offered only one price option. Now, many companies have added cheaper plans. Shows come with commercials, but you could pay less. For example, Disney Plus Premium is $13.99 a month, but the basic plan is nearly half that at $7.99 a month. Number three, to keep track of all your streaming subscriptions, consider moving them to one credit card, which leads to tip number four. Each month, review every service you're paying for and determine whether you're still using it enough to justify the cost. This can also help you catch any price hikes. Finally, you can save the most money by using one of the free services like Pluto TV, the Roku channel, or Tubi. These services have lots of classic movies and TV shows, plus some original content. In exchange for watching for free though, you will have to put up with some ads. Yeah, ads on a big deal if we're saving money. I added up my costs this morning with Netflix, Hulu, Prime, ESPN Plus, and Fubo. I'm paying 
150 bucks. I suggest you do the same. One more tip, you should share your logins while you still can and know that most services control account sharing to some degree by limiting the number of people who can access the services at one time. If you have a consumer problem or a question, I want to know about it. Email Steve on your side at 9news.com. I'm Steve Stager, Steve on your side, 9 News. I'm watching Steve add those numbers up right now. <laughs> That's the way he does it. Uh, 214 days until Coach Prime returns for a second season with the Buffs. And today, CU released the 2024 schedule. The opponents are familiar and new as the Buffs rejoin the Big 12. The team opens the season with three non-conference games, and that includes the season opener at Folsom Field on August 31st against North Dakota State. The schedule includes nine conference matchups, Texas Tech, Arizona, Baylor, Kansas, a few of the big ones. KU also announced today their game will be played at Arrowhead Stadium because, Tom Green? Well, they're going to have to play it there because uh, their uh, memorial stadium there in Lawrence is uh, under reconstruction next year. So, so they're going to be. kind of cool, though, to play at Arrowhead. Yeah. Um, we don't know the times because, you know, it's always the TV things that matter on that. May or June, we'll probably see the full schedule. And then the times are always loosely defined, as we've learned. I think a lot of times they look at what's best for the television networks. We saw a lot of those early starts and late starts. But it seems to me that most of the time they just figure out what is the least convenient for, for people going to the games. And, and for the players in some cases, yeah, so too. We have a, a couple of 6 a.m. games. Yeah, and a couple doesn't of matter where you're traveling starts. from, whatever. You yeah. can get up. Whatever works. Uh, um, it'll be interesting to see. And, and you look at the, the, those game two and game three, Nebraska and CSU, the rivalry on games. On the road. Yeah, again, uh, both very interesting matchups for, for the prime. Yeah, that, that's a lot of pressure. Speaking of Coach Prime, the Sanders family looking to make their roots here in Colorado maybe a bit more permanent because over the weekend there was a video posted online showing Coach Prime surprised by his sons. They were touring a new mansion. Of course, his sons probably make enough to buy the mansion. The house located between Golden and Boulder on 33 acres, about 18 miles away from Folsom. Our partners at the Denver Business Journal say the deal to buy has not yet been inked. The house, as you can see, it's not bad. No. Uh, listed for $7.2 <laughs> million. And on, on social over the weekend, he said his kids bought it. They make a ton of money. That's true. With the NIL stuff. I mean, I don't know. The whole thing was a little. Whenever I shop for a house in the Golden Boulder area, about 18 miles from Folsom, it's always tough to find one with an Olympic-sized swimming pool. So they got <laughs> lucky with that. To find one with that. Just, just in case you want to host the Olympics in 2024. <laughs> Some of us live close enough to our neighbors that we can open the window <laughs> and go, "Hey!" and we're right there. <laughs> Hop in. He doesn't. Okay.